Hey, what's up? It's Zach, and today we're in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to be um, doing an illustration and kind of taking you through that full process. Um, I'm kind of going to have to skip through some basic stuff just because I've tried doing this a lot, and every time it's hard to get everything compacted right and explained. And so I'm really just going to kind of throw all that caution to the wind, as they say, and I'm just going to um, record it all do it. I'm sure there'll be a ton of questions. Um, I would say majority self-taught and from YouTube and stuff. So um, I do things super weird. I know. And a lot of it's probably ass backwards, but it's honestly whatever. Um, so as you can see, I, um, I found a picture of a model or whatever and um, edited it down and moved stuff around. I, I can't really go into a lot of detail on that just because it's like you move the picture around, you break it until it looks weird. I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so I have kind of like a base of what to go off of. Um, you can, like, I have. And this is just so that I have like a base to work off of. Um, I'm just going to be mainly just tracing over this and kind of showing the techniques of it, mainly just because I want everything to, I don't want to mess up if we're keeping it 100. I, I don't want it to turn out bad and then me waste a lot of time because uh, if it's not on camera, it's fine. I can just sit here and change it, but if it's on camera, it's a lot more pressure to like, um, don't fuck up. So. So yeah, this is all in time lapse now, and um, I did this over about six hours, I think, uh, maybe seven, uh, not counting the photo editing and stuff, that's just vectoring time. And so yeah, right now I'm kind of just color blocking stuff. Um, I'm not the best at uh, color or how it works and everything, it's something that I'm still studying and working on, and so um, a really good YouTuber is Michael K. Russell. Uh, he does Photoshop um, coloring for comics, but he's actually really good at, um, you know, just explaining, like, in general how things work and how it operates, like, conceptually. And that's helped me a lot, and I've actually pulled a lot of things from, like, the way he works into Illustrator and kind of use that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm using the Blend tool right now. I'm Once again, it's hard to explain exactly what I'm doing, but pretty much... Uh, I'll link a video below whenever I make the blend tool video and you can just um, actually blend any two things together that are even different sizes and stuff it'll do some crazy stuff so a lot of times I'll put like um, a lot of, especially these stuff that says to look distorted I'll put um, some gradients of lines and they don't even have to be like that prominent even if you do like 50% black and stuff or 30%, 20%. Like if you do stuff like that, it's going to shade everything a lot different. Um, so yeah, just putting in some of the dark lines. Um, honestly, at this point, I'm not exactly sh like I know what I'm doing, but I don't. I wasn't exactly sure what I was doing. So a lot of this is kind of experimentation. Um, it does take a lot, <laughs> a lot of just trial and error, unfortunately, um, because it's not something. It's not something where I can just be like, okay, you're going to color block this area because like you need to know what you're going to do, but then be loose enough to just kind of go with it. Oh, right here. This is um, actually one of the more important things. A lot of times what I do is I group things together. So you're seeing I'm grabbing all those and it they're all, they are all on a layer and stuff, but they're also grouped together. So when I double click inside that layer, I can um, just click on those things and it also fades out white behind it so it makes it super easy for me to see like like because right now you could barely see the background and it looks super detailed but when I'm working on it like this it makes it feel a lot more just like you know business as usual um, you just shade how you normally would you just kind of do your own thing and then I and a lot of times I'll also draw with either transparent if I'm trying to see through or um, slightly uh, like 50% um, opacity on stuff that way you can see what's behind it and that helps a lot um also pathfinder is huge i use that a lot um it's bound to i i i have a gaming background so i use macros and stuff to kind of um 
take away a lot of awkward shortcuts and some stuff that's not shortcutted. So like merge, I use a lot. Um, expand appearance, expand. I have expand appearance, merge, or expand, expand appearance, and merge all on one button so that it can combine two items pretty easy. It can get a little wonky, but um, another one that I use a lot is subtract. Obviously, um, yeah, just easy to take away and make little like insertions and lines super easy um another thing that is uh, i yeah i guess i can talk about this the thought process behind like all these um stuff kind of cutting away from each other is uh, all i'm really trying to do is shade and then i'm just trying to think of a distorted way to shade it so if i think so when i look back i'll think oh this needs more black here but instead of just putting like an exact like an exact curve of how the face would be. I just kind of like act like it's a hair and then just do a bunch of crazy stuff and then that works as the shading per se. And so compositionally it still works but it's not as much like an exact science, you know? So, um, yeah, just putting in lines still. Uh, obviously, um, understanding light sources and everything is pretty important. Um, and there's plenty of resources out there on that so I'm not gonna get too into depth but I would, the only specific thing that regards to this about that is um, you see there's like a pattern of um, in the background of like repeating lines and sometimes there's dark lines that go all the way across. I'll keep the shading in that dark line so it looks like it's actually like fitting into the background. You know, it, it blends in a little bit. It feels a little more, um, you know, smooth. And I do that with a lot of my lines. Um, I'll kind of taper it to whatever the background or the direction or whatever everything else is going. So it, has more of a paintbrush feel and less of just like, okay, here's a corner stop. Um, so yeah, uh, a lot of the hair, I just try to, on the bottom and deeper spots, obviously black, um, a lot of improvision of just like, um, you know, making sharp lines, making things that look like hair. Um, yeah, right now, my stuff has a lot of black in it. And so that's my preference. And so I'm spending a lot of time just getting like the real darks in. And I like to kind of build up, um, do like, you know, kind of a lighter, uh, well, I like to do my bases and then I like to do, um, some of my lines and then kind of work the shading around those lines and then try to, um, almost like, uh, oil paint and try to move those around and then try to shade around it as I move stuff around. And I know some people might think that that's a little disingenuous, or not disingenuous, but um, really just ask backwards. Like you're, you most people would say, oh, well, you need all your lines done first, or all your color blocking. But I think like doing it like this, and since I already have a pretty good sketch in the beginning, I already really kind of know what it's gonna be. And on a lot of stuff like this, even if I'll I'll do like a vector piece that's like half done, and then just uh, scrap that, and then go on like and then use that as the sketch for the next one so a lot of times i'm like i'll work on a piece but then it'll end up just being a sketch for another one uh, because i think the more you do that process of like blending lines and color together and kind of like making them one process and making them kind of like they're on a you know the same plane i guess and they interact the same by doing that and doing it multiple times to a picture i think and being very comfortable with the lines is gonna is what really gives it this distort feeling. Um, you have to really be comfortable in like the curves and everything of what you're doing to really um, be able because or else on a lot of this stuff that's like super extended lines and stuff going across, I wouldn't really it wouldn't make as much visual visual sense if I didn't already have a great understanding of what was there before, which takes intense sketching and stuff. So this definitely isn't something you just kind of um, do on all stuff, you know. Uh, I definitely would recommend doing your line work first, but um, yeah. So here, I do a lot of gradients actually in this one. Um, and a lot of it's just either black fading to transparent or, you know, uh, red fading to transparent or black. And I just do some variation of that over and over. And a lot of those weird highlights in the background that seem like they're kind of maybe blurred is really just a line, um, a rectangle with uh, w a lot of it solid. And then at the very end, I'll just pull out a gradient piece and use that kind of like as a brush tip. Um, what else? Yeah, just 
I, I really use layers a lot, and that sounds dumb, or it sounds like basic, but I just, having an under, practicing and having an understanding of where you're at in your whole composition, like if you can think like, okay, I'm probably like halfway down the, um, you know, the color layer, or think like, okay, I know what's on top of this, I know what's below this, and kind of have like a feeling, like, that will help a lot because then you can know when you when you double click on these shapes and go into them and edit them you can like know what lines you can color over and what lines you um can't and that helps a lot and you can like kind of abuse that to cheat a lot like if you look at my past a lot of times behind it it's just a fucking madhouse like my because i'm going fast like any any line that quote unquote doesn't matter which a lot of times it ends up, ends up biting me and you know it does end up mattering but uh if i think a line doesn't matter i'll just like go as fast as possible because a lot of this is um like the energy of the line moving like because i'm going fast it makes it look sharper and that's just for being comfortable with something so like a lot of times i don't want to slow that down or anything um so yeah uh i did like the three arm type thing i don't know i repeated the arm like three times and so it's kind of hard to like I don't know. I can't really tell if it worked or not, but, uh, yeah. So I'm doing that and I spend a lot of time honestly just thinking about it. I'll sit here and stare at it and I cut a lot of that out because I do just stare at it a lot. And if I do this on Twitch, I'll talk and then I'll like, you know, go get a drink or, you know, just whatever, um, listen to music and stuff. So a lot of it is just kind of staring at it. Um, right there, all I'm doing is I took the whole face and, you know, uh, made a uh, like masked it and then just put it up there um one downside <laughs> to drawing so hectically and doing stuff like this is that your files are gonna get really big so on stuff like that where i have to copy part of the face or something i um like make it smaller or whatever you know i delete all the stuff that i don't need because the files do get huge and it's not as bad on my pc but on my if you're working on like a laptop or something i would be very hesitant and definitely save a lot because and and a lot of times you can even um take all your like take one layer and kind of compress it down once you know you're kind of done with it i say compress i mean like uh you know use pathfinder and merge everything it is the same color and whatnot um so yeah still just um using that kind of grid that i put in the background before to kind of um help me push everything back a little bit um i'm using that almost as my midground, and then using black as my background and uh like my very very background and my uh lines obviously for the foreground um tattoos are super fun to draw on any like on shapes it's it's hard but it's really fun um let's see See, like stuff like that, it's hard to explain. It's it's being comfortable with the Pathfinder tool enough to understand like how you can ma manipulate shapes with each other. And a lot of times, I'll copy and paste shapes over, and then use them in relation to another. So, uh, like one that came to mind super quick, the nose. I know at some point during this, I um, didn't want to have to draw the other part of the nose again, but I wanted both parts, like it, to be shaded darker or whatever. And so, a quick way is just to like use the pathfinder or even just click on those two points copy that curve and then paste the curve in and pathfinder it into the other path and then it makes that so fast like two clicks and you did something that would have took like a lot of precision to do just because you already had made that path once and it's just being comfortable um knowing what's already on the canvas knowing what what you have down knowing what like you have to work with and stuff and that's just yeah, like I said, practice. Um, what else? It's really just like nitpick drawing. Um, a lot of these drips and stuff, I can't, I don't know how to explain. Look at water, um, even trace over water, uh, like, and just practice. Because, like, now I can do it, but, like, I spent a lot of time looking at watercolors and stuff and, like, understanding, not, not, like, fucking, uh, 200 IQ, like, with a, uh, you know, like, measuring every curve and stuff like that. I just, like, paid attention to it. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then I would pay attention to how other artists use it. And then just, like, 
um, a lot of times I'll place textures next to my um, artboards. I didn't hear, but I kind of already knew what I was doing. Um, but say like, say like I see like um, a paint texture that I really like that incorporates like rock or something, you know, something like crazy. And I'll just take that and set it next to it. And I may not ever use that exact thing, but it's something to think about and it's something to reference to be like, okay, well, if it, like, and that texture may only be for a certain piece of the drawing. So, like, say, you know, whatever. It's a piece of clothing or something. And you wanted that rock texture to be the clothing. Like, it's just nice to have there. And I think a lot of uh, a lot of times we get caught up in, like, what how other people um, illustrate something or how other people depict something and less just, like, what it looks like. Like, you know. And I think a lot of um, vector lends itself and especially if you're good with gradients and opacities where you can create some weird shapes out of some tech like you can use textures and create weird textures out of that stuff um and it just takes experimenting uh um <laughs> i don't know i like to frame i like to use those little frames uh i don't know what they are i saw i i literally saw someone on pinterest do something like that one time like but it was a uh, photo manipulation and I was like that's the coolest thing ever because it looked like a frame inside of a frame but they were like overlapping or whatever and so I've kind of used that to um and a lot of my stuff just I don't know I think it's cool um creating mini pieces inside of something um gives it an extra feel also lets you highlight stuff and it makes it look like a study which is super cool um but yeah that's it's about to be wrapped up. Um, I can nitpick on these things forever. I honestly will still probably do stuff with this. Um, that's just how I am. <laughs> I'll end up, you know, working on it way too long. But it's done enough now that um, I think it gives a good understanding of kind of the process. Um, I know I can go into everything. I'm really going to try to um, get some videos up. They're like 60 second, two minute, three minute. Um, you know just very small and then put those in the playlist together to kind of explain stuff like the blend tool and kind of um more intermediate stuff i don't want to do fully beginner stuff because uh, that's mind numbing but um i think a lot of this like blend tool and gradients and stuff like that like a lot of this stuff isn't hard it's just understanding how to use it so yeah be sure to subscribe and thanks for checking out the video